Hi, I'm Bill Wilt of Assured Research. Thanks so much for joining us uh, at our reasonably newly created YouTube website. And uh, thanks for your interest in this uh, short video on the technical charting of liability cost trends. Um, full disclosure, we are not, and certainly I am not, an expert, uh, a technical expert in uh, charting analysis. Um, but there are some simple tools out there, and that's what we're using here. Simple tools which, when overlaid on economic series, cost trend series, which is the case here, um, we think they they add to the interpretive value of uh, the charts and series. So uh, you'll be the ultimate judge of that. But um, uh, with that in mind, why don't we get started and bear with me just while I share the screen and we will uh, jump right into it. There we go. Good. So technical charting. Now these series, again, drawn from our November assured briefing, and I'm recording this in, uh, um, in late October. Um, so you'll recall, um, many of you will recall, that uh, major components of liability uh, lost, lost costs, uh, um, kind of the main cost of goods sold for a liability insurer, um, consist of wages, medical medical expenses, um, and legal services. Um, we're starting here with wages uh, and our cost series. This is the year monthly, recorded on a monthly basis, the year and year on year change starting in uh, November, um, uh, excuse me, uh, September of 2017 uh, moving forward. So we have a couple of pre-pandemic years uh, that you see in the chart, um, not a lot of movement, and then suddenly lots of volatility starting with the pandemic. But let's first, and I think you can probably see my cursor, let's first uh, describe what you're looking at. These are the year-on-year -year, uh, changes, percentage changes. So you know, wage inflation was in the you know, kind of three-ish percent range for the couple of years before the pandemic. Uh, that what makes this a technical charting analysis, and again, I don't want to overstate it. These are relatively simple tools that we've overlaid here, but but standard tools used by uh, those who engage in this uh, regularly. Um, we add a 20-period uh, moving average. So these are monthly, so a little under two, two years of monthly moving average to the series. Uh, and these bands, or these these three lines together, are referred to as Bollinger bands, um, named after the gentleman who uh, created this uh, some decades ago. Um, these are essentially a 95% uh, confidence interval, uh, keying off of that same, in this case, 20 period moving average. So it's a measure of the variability of this series and you would reasonably expect about 95% of the data points would fall within these uh, within these bands because we've constructed them to be at the 95% uh, confidence interval level. You see only occasionally uh, here, and with the pandemic, for instance, did they really spike out of that uh, out of that range? Um, so. That's what we're using here. It's what makes this a technical charting exercise, albeit a simple one. And we will, when we look at wage wage growth, um, you see it was really very stable. Not a lot of variability uh, leading up to the pandemic, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, uh, presumably, government policies and transfer payments get included in wages. Um, dramatic spike in volatility, and you see how the uh, the Bollinger bands. Uh, spike out uh, with that volatility. Moving average it rises. And here's what's interesting. The moving average is for wages, uh, which we think represents about 27, 28% of liability cost trends for property casualty insurers. That's really, it's starting to come down. That's the good news. That's one of the reasons the Fed has indicated that they're um, likely to pause on the interest rate increases because they're, con they're concerned very much about wage inflation, the wage price spiral. And as they see wage inflation starting to settle down, you know, they're happy. They're happy. We're happy. <laughs> um, notably here, what's what's typical in these series is you see the, the lower or upper boundary of the series occasionally tested. Um, here it falls short of touching that 95% confidence interval, but spikes down, then comes back up again. And then here in kind of a downward series, you see it 
um, each successive uh, point is a bit lower than the point before, and that helps to bring the series down. So uh, it's possible that wage inflation um, will continue to glide down. Uh, I'll just leave, uh, before we move on, I'll leave this open note. We you will have seen in some of our writing, we frequently wonder if the labor unrest across the country, and I think there is, uh, by all measures, a record level of labor unrest and strikes in, in the year 2023. One has to wonder if that will um, maybe at least prevent wage inflation from going down further, if not create some pressure to the upside. It is, though, clearly higher, 3% out of pre-pandemic, now more like four-ish percent. So it is higher than it once was. Let's look at legal services inflation. We have that at about 12 or 13 percent of overall, uh, the overall cost of goods sold for a liability insurer. Um, here it looks very different, right? It's the same time series, uh, November, I keep saying that, September of 2017 to uh, September of 2023. Um, but here it's it's notable, I think, that you don't see much uh, increased volatility. The width of the 95% confidence interval pre-pandemic, really very similar to the width post-pandemic. Uh, but what you see is now you see an upward pattern. Look at each successive increase of these three arrows um, where it pushes the upper boundary. Each one is a bit higher than the one before it, and that leads to a, a cost series that's really just steadily rising. So um, legal services, if they were in the three-ish percent range before the pandemic, you know, now are pushing, you know, pushing 6% and perhaps uh, will stay there, at least for some period of time. So kind of interesting, kind of a notable contrast to what we saw in wage inflation. Here you have a series that's um, characterized not by expanding volatility, just by upward pressures. Medical inflation. Now, medical costs thought to be the, the lion's share, maybe 60% or so of um, uh, liability, uh, liability costs for property casualty insurers. I don't know what we're looking at here. <laughs> there, there, it's difficult to tell. Um, and we and plenty of others have for quite some time been talking about the medical uh, medical CPI and how it includes a lot of series that have been volatile and, and vol both volatile and not relevant for property casualty insurers. Um, the, the kind of residual profits of health insurers, dental services, um, some other uh, other uh, components that just make it uh, not so relevant and, and clearly it's been very volatile, uh, not relevant for property casualty insurers. So what we have been doing um, is we've created through the PPI, the producer price index, re, what we've been calling reconstituted uh, medical trend series uh, relevant for workers comp on the left and private passenger auto bodily injury on the right. The one on the right would be probably uh, a more generalized uh, medical cost trend for liability insurers. Um, the weights of the different PPI series between physicians, ambulatory surgery centers, hospitals, uh, prescription drugs, physical medicine, and so forth for workers' comp, drawn from work done by the NCCI. Um, and here it's interesting. Uh, you see that pressures were emerging before the pandemic. You see this pattern where the each high is higher than the, the, the one before it. Then the series settles down for a period of time, starts to push the upper boundaries again, but we have this interesting uh, data point over the last couple of months where medical inflation in this reconstituted series is pushing the lower boundary. It's really come down sharply. Is it going to stay there or will it, in, is in a case like this, pierce the lower boundary but then jump back up? Time will tell. Um, I am mindful of the wage of the, the various strikes affecting healthcare systems around the country and how that could uh, potentially drive the wage component of healthcare costs, which in turn forces healthcare providers to raise their rates and uh, what they charge to workers' comp insurers or to uh, payers, including uh, auto insurers. Um, in the, char in the um, uh, chart on the right here, again, you see these pressures uh, emerging on the right hand, uh, excuse me, before the pandemic. Each high here is higher than the, the one before it. Um, pandemic had, uh, in the case of medical inflation, it, it brought it down, rose again. 
but here you know you have each high or at least you have, you have one data point where the the peak here is lower than the one before it and again it's coming like with workers comp it's coming close to testing that lower boundary these next next couple of months will be interesting to see whether this uh, series spikes back up again or whether it uh, uh, shows a peak but a, a peak that is lower than the one before it if that's the case that you know maybe uh, we all and actuaries could take some comfort that uh, um, that that this series could be forming a top when you put the three series together and that is wages uh, legal services and reconstituted the, the reconstituted medical trend and in here at these weights that we're showing here here i'm using the uh, private passenger auto bi trend you see a series that uh, where volatility increased meaningfully uh, after the uh, pandemic. That volatility seems to be diminishing. Um, and you've got this pattern where um, you could potentially argue that uh, that a top is being formed. If, the, if a peak here or if a rebound here is lower, ends up being lower than this 3.5% uh, 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 spike, um, our most recent peak, perhaps that would give some indication that a uh, you know the series is is forming a top. Um, if that's the case, though, it's still worth noting that this three called three and a half percent or so trend year on year trend is noticeably higher than the one and a half to two percent trend before the pandemic. Although lots of folks would say that that you know, they never really thought that that was sustainable. Lots of insurers you know, build in four or five and six percent uh, medical cost trends uh, uh, anyway. So um, there's potentially good news, I guess, to summarize it with uh, uh, that. I, we take away from uh, this uh, this exercise and in, in technical charting. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see what the next couple of months hold specifically as to that potential rebound. Um, and so, positive we, it looks like the uh, result could be positive that we might have gotten through the worst of the uh, um, uh, the inflationary pressures, even if we settle in at a place that is higher than a steady state that's higher than the pre-pandemic levels one would still generally characterize that as as manageable uh medical inflation in the call it three and a half even four percent range would be you know broadly considered manageable i suspect um one uh the one potential um uh Issue to watch again would be the I would submit is the uh, uh, labor unrest in the healthcare sector broadly um, affecting wages um, broadly, and then healthcare unrest in the even in the healthcare sector, which again could push up wages there, impact negatively impact the the margins of providers. They will in turn look to the payers, uh, including property casualty insurers, workers comp, and others, uh, to make up for some of those margins in the form of higher prices. So that's what we had for you. I hope you found this uh, found this work interesting. And um, uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not a subscriber, reach out to us. We'd be happy uh, to set you up for a, uh, with a trial to our work. Thanks again, and have a great day.